Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel, my name is Chantel and today I'm going to continue Dumbledore's office and I'm going to create this thing. An elaborate astrology chair crafted in the upper level of Professor Dumbledore's office in the Half-Blood Prince. But you never see this angle. But I want to make it because it's going to sit at the top and it's going to be cool. So. I have a balloon here that is roughly the size that I want it to be, where about a 12th scale doll can sit in. And I am going to paper mache a circle and then I can cut it whatever size I want it to be. So I'm going to paper mache it a little bit further than um, what it actually is and then I can just cut it. And then I'm going to use some PVA glue and water mixture that I have prepared here, but also some newspaper clippings. Just It's just normal newspaper, uh, nothing special. I picked it up for free at our shopping center. And then I'm, I think I'm gonna do three layers, but after every layer, I'm going to apply another color. So whenever I go over again with the newspaper I know that I'm covering this layer and I cover the entire thing so sometimes you can't even see where you've been but when you use color you will be able to see where you've been so the chair itself and the interior I might make from the same material as what the uh, curtains are made from so that maroon kind of color and then for the, um, there's a very large telescope going out to the window. I am going to use some wooden spools to build that up, which I bought from the store and uh, cotton spools, it says. That's what they look like. So what I've done is I've taped the balloon to the bowl. This is a, this is a ceramic bowl. And I, this way I can make sure that I'm not moving the balloon and that I stay in the middle of it. So to be safe, I'm just going to mark out to where I want the paper mache to go. And it's most likely going to be way too much, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Oops. That's not a straight line. I cut small strips or small squares because otherwise you get these little blips that stand up and that's what I don't want. Now I've got the whole balloon covered in newspaper and glue. I'm going to apply that layer of color. So for my next layer, I know where to go. Okay, I've got this whole thing covered now in a layer of uh, newspaper and a layer of this tissue paper and then I'm going to let it dry overnight and hopefully hopefully tomorrow this uh, will be dry and if not I might give it a blast with my hair dryer for now I'm just gonna let it dry air dry and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see how it looks tomorrow it is the next day and this is nearly dry time for a second coat of newspaper and another coat of color which is going to be green this time this has now five layers on it i think it's mostly hardened so um let's try and uh Oh, the glue has seeped to the bottom, but that's okay. Let's uh, take it out, demold it. Is that what you? Is that what you call it? <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if I can get this off. This balloon part. It's, uh, I don't know why it doesn't come out. It's just stuck in there. I 
Oh no, there we go. Well, that was all kinds of satisfying. Um, it's off. We have a bowl um, or a pumpkin. Pretty solid. This is still a little bit damp, so I'm going to leave that for a little bit longer. And then I will um, cut it to size and we can start working with it. The base would be here. And about the widest part at the top would be there. It's a bit awkward cutting, but for some reason I get in there better. Okay, so it's basically like I didn't have to curve it like that, but now it is an even bowl, or even enough, and I can just sit it like that. So it looks like that. Now this needs to be smooth, so I was thinking of putting some maybe texture paste or some speckle on the top, and then I can sand it so it's going smooth so I can paint it silver I think it's silver and um, yeah so I can paint it silver and then do the star pattern on it all right so I've got this quick dry polyfill crack resistant filler paint in 30 minutes and it's very lightweight uh, I've hardly used it but it says it's a smooth finish and easy to sand so I was thinking if I can just apply that to the surface, and even if it's a couple of layers, just fill in all those gaps, as you can see. And then sand it, and hopefully it will give it a smooth finish. I think I'm at the point where I can sand it now. So this is a medium grit sanding block, and this is a fine grit one. So let's just go ahead and start sanding it. So even though it doesn't look like it, it is really smooth. Um, if you look on the, on the side there on the camera, you can see that it's really smooth. It did even out most of the bumps and I'm actually pretty happy with this. So uh, I'm gonna like leave that as is so I can paint it. And I think I'm now gonna move on to creating the chair that goes inside. Before I move on, I just wanna give this a, a quick coat of Mod Podge just so I can see in that layer of um, chalk that comes off and um, so I can give it a nice layer for the paint to go on later. So my bowl, bowl, orb, sphere is all um, dry and the Mod Podge sealed all the dusty bits in so that's all fantastic and now I'm ready to um, put in whatever needs to be in and decorate and make and dec decorate the chair so this is the chair that I made for Snape's sitting room if you haven't seen that video you can find it here in the iCard section I will leave a link there on how I made this one and I decided to go with the pattern of this one, but tweak it a little bit. So what I came up with was it's the same back. It's a slightly altered side. So this dips in and goes around and lower here. And this dips more forward. The base I've made curved. This is the base for the chair or the foam board and this I have to cut slightly smaller so they are the inserts that go here and here. So I'm going to assemble the chair and then decorate the chair with the fabric that I use for the curtains as well. And I'm going to have to poke holes in here in order to uh, pull, the, pull the thread through so I get that tufted look. So here's that fabric that I used for the curtains, which is fairly thin, so that should be fine to drape around the chair. And then I will also use some felt, probably doubled up, 
so I can get that tufted look in the fabric. So now I've put this together, I can see that this needs to be a little bit lower. There we go. And if I move that this way, I can get that same cut out. a bit more of what that looks like. I'm going to go with that. Now this is drastically larger than what I have here. So I need to at least take that off and that off. And I'm going from either side in because this is that curve. So I want to keep following. So now that chair is tufted and the back is tufted. So these two parts, I am going to put the felt on and then put the fabric on and then I'm going to tuft it. So that's basically the same technique as with this chair, but with this one, I will not put the buttons in because they are either very tiny or just simply not there. And there's a lot of tufting going on. So. It's basically a 4343 pattern. Let's just put the fabric on this one first, like I've done with this one too. Fabric on there first, just wrap around and glue on, and then do this part. As I'm working away on this part, here are a few fun facts for you all. Although the overall layout of the office remained unchanged throughout the films, the set received minor modifications in nearly every film. The curio cabinets in the office were modified between the second and fourth films. In the second film, the cabinets had grills in the doors. In the fourth and subsequent films, the grills have been removed and replaced by glass. The pensive cabinet is also added in the fourth film. Also in the fourth film, the paintings on the walls are slightly rearranged from their position in the second film. Most notably, the large painting of the wizard sleeping while leaning against a chair has been removed. In the fifth film, the portraits of Everard and Phineas Nigellus Black are added, and Falk's perch has been moved from beside the desk to the upper level next to the telescope. In the eighth film, due to the change in headmaster, most of the decorations in the office, which can be assumed to have belonged to Dumbledore, have been removed. Dumbledore's curios are all gone, and the cabinets that use to house them are filled with dark bound books. However, in Snape's memories, the office is shown as it appeared in the sixth film. The headmaster's office is the place where the final scene of the final book in the series take place, excluding the epilogue. So this is what the chair looks like now. I started on the inside, then on the outside, and then uh, at the front. I just cut off every time I stuck something down, mainly with hot glue and fabric tech glue. Hot glue just grips really, really fast and doesn't really bleed through the fabric. So now I've covered these, so that's the back and the seat, with felt, two layers of felt. I'm going to cover them now with fabric and then I'm going to do the um, tufting. At the time of its construction, the set for the office was the most expensive to produce. It would be surpassed by the Ministry of Magic set. And at one point, director Chris Columbus and the production designer Stuart Craig were told that the set would be too expensive to construct. The producers ultimately were able to secure the funds needed to build the set. 
The set of the office, even though it was quite big, was relatively cramped and in order for the cameras to be able to shoot from various angles, it was necessary to have removable wild walls concealed behind the various shelves and cabinets. And we have a chair. Now I just need to do the tufting, which I'm going to do now. I was just trying to fit the chair into the bowl and I found that it needed a little wedge underneath. So that's what I did here. I just added a piece of foam board and now it just leans backwards a little bit more than sitting too upright. So that's how it will sit now. So from a piece of embroidery thread, I've pulled two strands because they, they're normally six strands. And then I've got a very, very skinny needle here, which I just threaded without too much hassle. But now what I need to do is one, oh, about there, two, three, and four. You see how that fabric pulls just there. And that is what I want to do all over this thing. So I'm going to do this off camera. Uh, and then in the end, I can just glue everything down at the back. I think I've done everything I wanted to do with the tufting. There you can see it. And here as well. And now I can glue this into place. Both actors who have played the elderly Dumbledore have been Irish. In an interview, Gambon mentions that his Irish accent is quite pronounced as Dumbledore, but no one asked him to change it. In the films, Dumbledore has the distinction of being the first human character to appear in the film series. And there we have it. Dumbledore's chair. And before I glue this into place, I want to paint the outside, and that is going to be silver. There will be a metal gold band here with some circles here as well, but yeah, I'm going to paint that silver. I've got a piece of cardstock. Well, it's not super thick cardstock, but I cut a, st a strip of it, which is gonna go around and that will be gold. And then there on top of that will be circles and the circles will attach to like a, a ring and another ring, which I will create in a little bit. This is half an inch strip. And I've got this hole punch, which is a one inch hole punch. I'm just going to punch out two. Which I will then glue on here. to finish that off and then paint it gold. Okay, now part of the outside is done. I can put the fabric in. And this should be enough to wrap it under and then stick it down all along the sides. And then along the way, I'll probably put some glue dots here and there as well so I can glue that down too. That will sit behind the chair anyway, so that's okay. Uh, this is the bottom middle. I'm really happy with, <laughs> really happy with how that looks. And the chair will sit in there like that. It's uh, wow. I'm just, <laughs> I'm really happy with my own work at the mo at this point. Um, I'm yeah, yep, <laughs> really happy with this. Now in the um, 
in the image there is these lines that are on the orb so I kind of want to make those as well so I'm just scoring with my pointy tool and so far it's working I'm just gonna go all, all, all around it's got horizontal ones as well so I'll just add them and then I'll show you what it looks like let's see with this same technique if I can carve out some stars and whatnot I think that works. So there's a star. I um, have to make a couple more though, but uh, at least it's working. So let's keep going. So what I've done is I've added all these stars and like fake constellations and whatnot, moons. Just in a couple of places, not everywhere. And I've added an extra strip, which I'm going to paint gold and then I've put some like rivets in there as well and then I'm going to put some um, glaze over it to make it look old just so it fills in those gaps and it, you can see that detail a little bit better then with some polymer clay I'm gonna make those little wheels that sit on the side here so I've got a blob of polymer clay here which should be more than enough and my clay extruder and you can find this one in my Amazon link if you are interested in buying one. There's one snake of clay. And there is the second snake of clay. Blend in the edges, make sure it's the same width. So there's the two. And then we have this snake of clay. In addition to the portrait of Dumbledore that was hung in his office automatically after his death, a second portrait of him was hung in several places in Hogwarts Castle and could also be seen in the headmaster's office. I'm pretty happy with them. I'm gonna wait baking them just in case I have, if I have more stuff that I need to make. So for the next bit is that I have to make the rings, oops, the rings around it. So I think um, I need a bigger piece of cardboard. That's what I think right now. So I think if I trace around this, There we go, a very faint circle. So five and a half is two, three thirds of, a, of an inch. This is seriously pure trial and error and I'm just gonna see if this fits. So what I will do is I'll cut out the inside circle and then a very large outside circle so it can grow outwards, not inwards. Okay, let's see if it fits. Not bad, not bad, because that's exactly where it should sit. Now for this ring around the, um, the first big ring around the outside, that will be this one, and there are all these signs and symbols on there. So I'm going to attach them or apply them with this um, permanent marker. And then there's a piece of toothpick and then another ring and then there's another ring on the outside which is just a skinnier and bigger part of this one or similar one to this one but skinnier and then I'm going to I'm going to make that in the same way as I made that one um, I will probably angle it a little bit differently uh, just so the the um, the egg can sit on this which is just an empty roll of um, masking tape I'm just um, going to create all these symbols and lines now 
During his life, Dumbledore became friends with many famous wizards and witches, such as Nicholas Flamel and his wife, Perinel, Bathilda Beckshot, and Griselda Marchbanks. Nicholas Flamel and Perinel were over 650 years of age when they agreed to destroy the Philosopher's Stone to thwart Lord Voldemort's return. Bathilda Beckshot died a few months after Dumbledore being killed by Voldemort. So I've painted this and then I wrote with a permanent marker on the gold and the back is just plain like that but this is the front of it and then I'm going to use this do the same thing with this it's just uh, another piece of cardstock and that's gonna sit like that these two pieces will sit on the outside I'm pretty sure they're sitting like this and this is just a strip of cardboard or cardstock just wrapped around here and then glued down and then cut off that's how simple that was those little rings will sit there and then I just need to make that and the telescope so I've got the two side pieces done as well which is just attached with hot glue to a skewer and then that will sit behind there looking like it's attached to the chair which is sitting over there out of the screen <laughs> and next up is the little cylinders that are sitting on the side these things so i was thinking of filling these this this was one and i just cut it in half filling it with hot glue hoping it will hold up Ooh. and then attaching a piece of paper and a smaller piece of paper until it looks like that So from the two tubes, I made this. I filled them with hot glue and I attached a ring, a ring like these ones here as well. More hot glue inside, glue the bead on top and on the bottom. And that's it really. And then they will sit here. And right now I am cooking the steering wheels in the oven. So when they are done, going to attach them to here and then paint everything in one go. The steering wheels are gold and this part is silver. The only thing that needs to be done, this I want gold, that's gonna be the base, and I'm going to attach the chair or the orb to that because I want this to be removable and um, standing on its own. So this will be set in Dumbledore's office, but it will be removable. And we have a stand. Ooh, this is so exciting. So what I can do now is glue this thing on sitting somewhere like this and there's the two rings done I think that looks rather cool it's a little bit fragile, but um, yeah, it's to be expected. So there we have that. I've glued the um, steering wheels to um, this part, I put a little rivet in between, and uh, this still needs to cool down, so I'm just going to put that on the side. And in the meantime, I might make a telescope, and I'm going to make that out of straw, a piece of cardboard tube that was in some packaging and some cotton spools. Okay, I think I'm gonna glue this together the way it is. I think that looks good. A telescope, I think it's pretty cool. I think I glued this at the wrong side. Okay, so, okay, that works. Now we have a telescope. With this little cabochon thing, I kinda wanna put there. I wish I had larger ones, 
which I don't at the moment. Okay, that was a bit of a struggle, but I got it to stick. So my idea is to maybe fill this up with hot glue. I actually think it kind of worked. It's still a little bit warm, but there's a little bit of a dome there. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that because I'm happy the way it looks. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And then right now I need to gesso these ones because these are all attached. I think they look pretty cool. And then from that wire I made earlier, I want to make a handle on this thing. And make two handles at the top. And then I can put the chair in and age it up. And then we're done. I found a solution on how to suspend the um, telescope because this is it finished. I still need to age it up, but I will get there. And then these are the wheels finished. So they will sit on either side there. So I have this hoop thing. This is another one. And I just broke it apart, attached it to the sides and it comes off again. If I have a straw and I put the straw here, and another one here that will work and then if I put the wheel in front of that it hardly shows um, I'll probably leave them black so they don't really show then I can still remove it if I want to and I will probably hot glue this on here and that should hold it hopefully right now it is past 11 p.m. So I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. I think I will finish this tomorrow. So it's now the next day and I've done a few things. So like I said, I was going to attach these two beams, which hold up this thing, which then will hold up this thing. I attached them with hot glue. So they're just paper straws. I kept them black and then the top parts on the inside are painted black as well. I think just keeping them black just makes it that it doesn't take away from the actual thing so i'm just keeping that black this ring i can lift it up and remove it if i want to because it just it just joins in here on the sides and then it leans on there so it's quite strong and this is a metal hoop i think it's an embroidery hoop or something like that i painted these little handles gold um i added another pin there and another pin there just to make this cardboard more sturdy because after all it's cardboard i need to color these ones with the um, strong tone just in the nooks and crannies to age it up a little bit then attach these there then put the chair in as well and also age up the outside there and age up the telescope and i think then we're done I know this was a bit of a longer video than usual and I know a lot of you don't mind. It took me three nights to edit this one as I wanted to show you as much detail as possible. It actually makes me a bit sad that we're nearing the end of this massive project. There is still lots for me to do for next week and next week's video will truly be the end of this project, at least for a little while. I do want to create a little Dumbledore doll to go with the miniature, but it takes some courage to get into making dolls. Let's have a look what the final chair looks like inside of Dumbledore's office. And this is it for part 11 of this video series. I hope you did enjoy the build of the astronomy chair. Next week I will be back with you for the very last installment of this video series. Please check out my social media in the description box below and if you're new here, welcome! Don't forget you can hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!